Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I try to remind people when I do stories that oftentimes we're only hearing the first side of the story. So someone files a lawsuit, they make allegations, other side hasn't answered yet. So the story often will say, here's what happened. And you've got to understand that's one side of the story. The other side, when they file their answer, might be completely different than we'd expect. However, I'm going to tell you also that occasionally I do stories where I think to myself, boy, I wish I was a judge on this one. I wish I was the judge on this one, because number one, I think I know how I'd rule, but number two, it'd be fun to ask the other side what they were thinking, and unfortunately, attorneys come into court, and they've got to answer on behalf of their clients, so it would be, of course, an attorney standing there answering some difficult questions, but Bill sent me a note, so Steve, check out the story from Bloomberg, Square, that's the, uh, the company that allows for online payments, uh, but also they have a little reader you can put on your phone, and you can swipe credit cards. Uh, and I use Square when I sell my books. So anybody who's ever bought a book from me uh, after responding to me talking about it here on my channel, uh, I've invoiced you via Square. So I use Square. So I'm familiar with Square. Square now is being sued over a transaction, a $645,000 diamond payment that they refused to process according to the lawsuit. So Joel Rosenblatt wrote this for Bloomberg. A woman attempted to buy diamonds in New York City with a debit card that was linked to a Russian bank account. And uh, she somehow didn't manage to get the diamonds. And this whole thing's now in court. And she blames the transaction going astray on Square. She's a Florida resident who says she spent $645,000 at a West 47th Street store in Manhattan's Diamond District. And she says in her lawsuit that she never got her diamonds and the payment processing company won't return her money. She says they won't do that because they said that the purchase violated U.S. sanctions on Russian banks. So they tell her, well, you know, transactions no good. But then she says, well, then why don't I get my money back? So she's a U.S. citizen, but she's got friends and family in Russia. She filed her complaint Friday in San Francisco Federal Court, and she did that there because that's where Square is based. So she lives in Florida, transaction in New York, but Square is based in California. She says she made her purchases at Royal Star Inc. about a year ago using cards linked to Russian banks. She says she held the accounts because she's occasionally traveled to Russia long before the trouble started with Ukraine. So she says that Square took the money out of the banks before any sanctions of the banks were in place. And in any case, she argues that her use of money held in a Russian bank was and is legal. Despite the fact that none of the sanctions affected these transactions, Square claimed that the bank was sanctioned, and therefore it could not process the purchase, according to the complaint, which includes invoices and says the company has illegally held her money now for almost a year. So the bank was included in sanctions issued in March of 2022, more than two weeks after she says she bought the diamonds and the jewelry, and even then only covered transactions involving debt or equity, not debit card purchases. Instead of transferring the money to the merchant or returning them, Square retained the funds and has refused to return it or even offer any reasonable explanation as to why, according to the lawsuit. Square reps did not immediately respond to a request for comment, and the case is 23-CV-00953, U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California in San Francisco. So it basically boils down to a very simple thing. Buyer goes into a store of seller and attempts to buy something, And the transaction is conducted, apparently, over Square. And Square, apparently, takes the money from the account and has it. And before they pass it along, they decide they can't do that because they say that there are sanctions against that bank, which were passed a few weeks later, according to the complaint. And so they don't give the money back and they don't pass it along to the buyer. Okay, so why do they have the money? Why would they keep the money? And so, again, we're assuming that's what happened. We don't know what the answer is going to be. Square, for all we know, is going to say, oh, we refunded the money years ago. Who knows? Who knows? But if that's the case, 
You can imagine dragging the attorney for the company into court and saying, okay, you guys took the money in ostensibly to pay somebody else for products that this customer is buying. You decided not to pass the money along, but you didn't send the money back. Who has the money now? Where is the money now? And if they say, well, we still have it. Okay, why do you still have it? Is that really part of the transaction for you guys to hang on to the money for over a year, however long it's been? Doesn't seem right. And that's, that's the big question. Who's got the money now and why? So it's a very, very strange story. And I can tell you that I've handled literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of transactions involving Square. I've never had any trouble with any of them. None of them. Most of mine are smaller. So if I sell a book for 20 bucks and somebody pays the invoice and then I send the book, you know, you can imagine it's not going to be that big of a transaction that Square is going to ask you, ooh, we need to scrutinize that transaction. But I know people who've used Square before uh, at like fairs, you know, uh, gift fairs or county fairs or, or, you know, fundraisers at schools or something. And they say that every now and then somebody will complain and reverse, an, or, you know, reverse a charge on their square or something. And, you know, that's the risk you take as a merchant, which you become when you start selling stuff using Square. Uh, I have yet to have that kind of a problem occur with anybody who's bought a book from me. But this is a weird one. And I know some people are going to say, Steve, 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 you're, you're, you're skipping the most obvious flag here. A woman went into the Diamond District in New York and attempted to buy $645,000 worth of diamonds with a debit card. Isn't there something else probably going on here? Oh, I don't know. I mean, (laughs) I'm not a big fan of jewelry, as you may have guessed. But possibly? But that right there is not a reason for Square to say, oh, we're going to cancel this transaction and keep the money. (laughs) I'm not saying it's what they did. I'm just simply saying that in a hypothetical world, that wouldn't do it. Uh, Would the feds be interested in a transaction like this? Quite probably. I suspect a transaction of $645,000 to purchase diamonds might pop up on somebody's radar. Of course, of course. But that's not the allegation here, as far as we know, that Square has not said we're hanging out the money because this transaction looked strange. It, it, It looked suspicious to us. It's not not the allegation. The allegation is, oh, there are sanctions against those banks now. But number one, she says those sanctions went into place a couple weeks later. And number two, wouldn't have applied to transactions such as this. So we'll see what happens. It's certainly an interesting story. But as of right now, there's a lawsuit, which of course will be an answer in three or four weeks. But Square is being sued over $645,000 on a diamond payment. That it refuses to process, and the woman says, they got my money, and they won't give it back. So Joel Rosenblatt wrote that for Bloomberg. Bill sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I'm writing a book. Yes, I've got the page numbers done.